Now, your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Welcome to MTO. A look at the storm tracker Doppler. All is calm out there tonight. We had some showers and storms that were kind of moving across the area earlier today, but all of those fading away here tonight won't rule out an isolated shower. But for the most part, we're going to keep things calm until we get to tomorrow when another round of storms will become possible. 70s in many areas upper 60s from Champaign to Effingham. And we're going to top out back near 80 again tomorrow with again those afternoon storms popping up across the area. But a big change coming in our direction in terms of cooler and drier weather. We'll show you that coming up here in a little bit. WCI3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. So it's critical that we have this conversation to, to kind of set the stage or try to get ahead of the curve. A string of shootings has people concerned how one group is trying to get to the root of the problem. I think everybody gets in a state with adrenaline running. We're learning more about a fire at a hog farm. Why firefighters said workers tried to keep the animals inside the building. U of I's campus town has had its share of visitors. Why these had to be removed. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. You've heard it from police, city leaders, and people who live in Champaign and Urbana. Gun violence continues to be an issue. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. Last night, a man was shot in Champaign. Earlier today, police made an arrest in a murder case. And tonight, a 30-year-old man was shot and went to the hospital. All of that has one group trying to make a change before things get worse. WCIA3's Jennifer Jensen has the story. Bullet casings have been scattered in the streets. Shootings pierce holes in homes, and some end with death. The effects of gun violence last long after the trigger is pulled. Personally, you know, I got a bullet in my back, so it left me in a wheelchair. James Corbin is part of First Followers of Champaign-Urbana, a group that works with programs to build strength and peace by supporting and guiding formerly incarcerated or at-risk people away from violence and toward a more fulfilling future. They started this organization because they noticed an escalation in violence in the CU community. That continued on Tuesday night when a 31-year-old man was shot at a home on Richwood Drive. He was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Nobody has been arrested yet. Just last Thursday, a 25-year-old man was shot and killed in Champaign, and now a man has been arrested. 24-year-old Keith Baker turned himself in to police for that. This violence is what First Followers is trying to prevent. So it's critical that we have this conversation to, to kind of set the stage or try to get ahead of the curve. On Tuesday, more than 100 people joined in on a virtual meeting to address the problem and find ways to put a stop to this. The next day, another meeting was held for 18 to 24-year-olds to start a similar conversation. The goal was to dig below the surface to identify where the violence problem stems from and come up with ways to combat it. You know, you're going to throw your life away. Why would you do something like that? But the critical thinking aspect is not there, and that's another, that's another internal thing because age is a fact. So far this year in Champaign, there have been at least 51 confirmed shots fired cases. Year to date in Urbana, there have been 21 shooting incidents, one of them deadly. A big part of the conversation during the community meetings were focused on uplifting and educating young people. A suggestion that was brought up to prevent the pattern of gun violence was to have free, regularly scheduled activities with mentors, starting right after school gets out until 9 at night to fill kids' time. Another idea was to get more mentors to speak in the classroom. If you can get some of us in the school districts and be able to sit down and explain to them the severity of what they're doing, once you take a person's life, there is no coming back uh, from that. A lot of them don't understand the consequences are actually what they're doing. Reporting, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA 3, your local news leader. First Followers has a drop-in center at Bethel AME Church in Champaign to provide resources to people who need help. More information can be found at WCIA.com. 
We have new details tonight. Authorities now believe they know how a Farmer City woman died. 69-year-old Donna Kelly was reported missing last week. She was found dead in her home last night. Police say the preliminary autopsy shows she died from diabetic complications. And we have an update on last night's hog farm fire south of Newman. We've learned one firefighter from Camargo was hurt. He was checked out by a doctor and has been allowed to return to duty. Meanwhile, we're learning more about the damage and confusing moments at the scene. WCIA3's Jen Lask has the story. When I got here, we saw a bunch of smoke. It looked like it was coming from the back side of the building. Firefighters found themselves battling not just flames and smoke at a burning barn, but also some workers who tried to shut the door and keep the pigs inside. They just, they just said that uh, once they're out, then they will have to be uh, euthanized. So... But at this time, we just decided to let them out. And we asked Amber Portner with Christensen Farms if those workers were following directions from higher up. She said at that point, upper management hadn't reached the fire yet. I think everybody gets in a state with adrenaline running and, and emotions are going. And these are the animals that they care for every single day. So they have no intention to do wrong by those animals. And at the end of the day, I think it comes to human nature and everybody's trying to do what they can in a high, high stress situation. Veterinarian Laura Dahlquist says the majority of the 1,300 pigs trapped inside survived and a team on site checked on those that were injured. We saw some of the pigs that survived the fire getting corralled onto trucks afterwards. Now we know that a local farmer took them in. Well, fortunately, we were able to find an empty barn for them to be located in, and they will grow until we are able to market them. Some of the pigs in the barn building next door have also been moved for the time being. And now Christensen Farms crews are looking ahead as they try to figure out how much this will ultimately cost and how it all happened. In Edgar County, Jen Lask, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Vets are testing the surviving pigs to make sure they're still healthy after traveling off property. They're expecting those results to come back by Friday night. Taking a look now at coronavirus cases across the state. More than 1,100 new cases were announced today. Illinois' total is now more than 114,000. The governor says the vast majority of those people have recovered. But still, 160 people did die in the last 24 hours. The death toll is around 5,000. New for you tonight, state lawmakers got an email this afternoon warning them to get tested for coronavirus. House Speaker Michael Madigan's office told them a staffer at the Bank of Springfield Center has tested positive. They were there when lawmakers were working. The letter said there's no reason to believe the staffer came into close contact with lawmakers, but advised them to get a test just in case. A pastor in Champaign is filing a lawsuit against the governor. Dustin Brown is pastor of The Table. It's part of Jesus House Restoration Ministries. They help people with challenges like addiction and homelessness. But because they also hold church services, they fall under the umbrella of a religious organization. Those are being limited to services of up to 10 people. Brown's church has been holding services of around 40 people outside without masks on. The public health district filed a cease and desist order telling them to stop, but Brown feels his organization is being treated unfairly because of its ties to religion. Daytime drop-in centers and shelters and, and things like that. They're doing the exact same thing. The only difference between us and them is we're preaching the Word of God. Um, and so if you're going to put a cap on, on, on a religious service outside, then you should definitely put a cap on how many people you let in a homeless shelter or in a daytime drop-in center. The governor's office has until tomorrow to respond. And a legal challenge to the governor's executive orders could get a hearing at the U.S. Supreme Court if two Chicago area churches persuade the high court to take the case. A federal judge ruled in a lower court Pritzker's order, quote, has nothing to do with suppressing religion and everything to do with reducing infections and saving lives. The churches are appealing that ruling. One of the people defying Governor Pritzker's orders is a Capitol Guard who protects the state house. Shortly after House Republican Darren Bailey visited Fox Run Restaurant and Lounge. Capitol Officer Rodney Oswig went there and posted pictures on social media. He thanked the company for opening their dining room in defiance of the governor's order. It came to a point where the goalposts just kept getting moved back by the governor's states, and uh, we wouldn't have been able to survive that. So it was either close the doors permanently or open them back up. 
The owner says even though the county public health department inspected and approved his setup, the city of Springfield served him a cease and desist letter. He and his lawyer sent one right back to the mayor and police chief threatening legal action if they try to shut them down. As of tonight, the bar and dining room were still open to the public. One city is shutting down part of a street to help out restaurants that are opening on Friday. Rantoul is turning part of Sangamon Avenue between Tanner and North Girard into an outdoor food court. Drivers will still be able to get on to Sangamon Avenue between those streets, but that's for parking. Through traffic will be closed there. Businesses are asked to submit applications to use the food court. This will last through June 30th. And Champaign's mayor issued an emergency order to help restaurants and bars as well. They're allowing those businesses to use certain sidewalks, streets, loading zones, and parking spaces for outdoor dining. Businesses with private parking lots and other outdoor spaces can also be used. And the city is also creating picnic parks on several streets for people to eat takeout from downtown restaurants. For information on where those will be, go to WCIA.com. One woman is on a life-saving search, what she needs from a donor. Plus, U of I's campus town had some unusual visitors, why hundreds of bees were swarming there. And it's news Illini athletes have been waiting for when some can start going back to campus.